Hey everyone, I'm Kirk Lines and welcome to another episode of Taste of Torrance. I'm about to take you inside one of the hottest new restaurants in the South Bay scene near the Hollywood Riviera. Betalino Kitchen is serving up authentic Italian food prepared by a Michelin star chef. Let's check it out. From the rustic decor to the house-made pastas, the name of this restaurant really tells an awesome Italian story. And you know what, there's no one better to tell me that story than chef and co-owner Vince Giuliano. Kirk, great to see you. Great to see you again. Thanks for coming, yeah, exactly. We, now, yeah, most of you probably recognize this handsome face from another uh, episode of Taste of Torrance, and that was when we were at your other restaurant, you, Gaetano's. You guys came to Gaetano's a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, and now we have Number two. Betolino. Betolino. Yep. So tell me, what is the story behind Betolino? Where, where does that name come from? Because I know there is an a actual history behind it. Yes. Yeah, so so Betolino in, in the Middle Ages met a, an Italian restaurant that was owned by a family. Mom was out front serving the guests. Dad was in the kitchen making food. Only in villages you would find it, right? Right. They still exist, but they are a little bit on the rare side. But uh, you know, the, the basis behind it is that it's a village-owned restaurant owned by family. And since we were coming to the Riviera Village, we decided, let's go with this name, Betolino Kitchen. Great, now now you've added someone to the family, and that is your, your chef here, Fabio. He's an awesome chef, he really is. So I was in culinary school about six years ago over in Florence. My chef teacher was Fabio. And you know he really was a guy that motivated me to want to you know, learn more and cook more and dive into what I was tasting. Um, he ended up coming out with his family. They loved the area. They said, yeah, we'd love to move here. So we got him out here the, the year after that. Um, and then shortly after, we started Betalino Kitchen. Uh, tell me, how does uh, this restaurant differ from Gaetano's? Gaetano's is your traditional family Italian restaurant. Betalino, we're doing a little twist on um, your traditional dishes like lasagna, but in more of a modern way. Okay. So, you know, for example, the lasagna, we're doing it in a, um, it's a lamb sauce. It's a really rustic lamb sauce with a, a Parmesan fondue on the bottom and a little bit of Beautiful. basil oil around the side. So it, it's, a, it's a little bit more of your modern Italian. What's this concept about a betel So line? every day Fabio comes in and writes up a betel box and it's basically, it's a rotating menu. Not a rotating menu, it's a rotating dish. Okay. We do a soup, a salad, uh, a pasta or a side and then an entree and it changes daily and are each of the individual components slightly smaller so that it creates sort of one meal size exactly yeah that's awesome it's really cool well I gotta tell you I'm excited to take a look around I'm excited to go see Fabio again I'm excited to eat some food we're excited to get this going too Kirk yeah all right what do we say we go take a look sounds good awesome I remember this guy. How are you? Good. How have you been? Good, very good. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having us. How's how's it been going so far since the last time I've seen you? Yeah, very well. Good, good. And I can see you made some really awesome looking dishes today. Can you tell us about what we've got here? I see some gnocchi here. This is gnocchi, it's gnocchi pignocchi. So in the dough we have uh, the potato and mm, English pea. And English peas, yeah. okay. It's and so saute with uh, Italian sausages, uh, some dried tomatoes. On, on the bottom we have a parmesan fondue. Oh, sounds beautiful. And the decoration it's uh, English pea sprout. Oh. To give freshness. Right, and to continue the theme of peas. Okay, what do we have here? I see some uh, some shrimp. Here we have tagliolini. Tagliolini uh, with the squid ink inside. And I, I, I think that for people who haven't had that, they, they might look at that and say, wow, black pasta would be a little bit like, it, it, it provides a little bit of a seafood flavor. Of course. But not, not overpowering. The sea, mm -hmm. not the seafood. Sea. I like that. <laughs> I like that. The sea. The idea is to give the flavor of the sea. Like the uh, like the gnocchi, the 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 squid ink. Uh, you said it was tagli tagli tagliolini. Uh, that is also house made, correct? Yeah, everything is out. The pasta is uh, everything is made here. We got some scallops here. Tell me yeah, about those. The scallop, the scallop is wrapped in the, in the prosciutto di parma. Beautiful. Uh, seared. Uh, very moist inside. 
And the orange, I think, is a nice, that's a nice note in there, a real nice note. Yeah. And then down here, it looks like, you, this is your twist on a, on a panzanella, correct? Yeah, the panzanella is a traditional panzanella. Everybody, I think, know is a salad with uh, bread. Uh, in place of the tomato, we use a wa uh, watermelon. Now this is what we were talking, I was talking about this with Vince out, out, out there earlier. This is your, your Beto box. Today Beto box, yeah. Okay, it's and every I, day. I was asking him what's on the menu for today, and he was like, I don't know, it's all up here in his head. Sure, so what, yeah. what was in your head to walk us through uh, this? So we have a um, salad, uh, mixed green, um, chestnut, uh, persimmon, goat cheese, and onion sprouts. Very with nice. balsamic vinaigrette. What kind of soup do we have yeah. here? Today we have uh, uh, butternut squash minestrone. Okay. So we have a cream of, of butternut squash with celery, carrots, onion, and uh, um, chives. Beautiful. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, chicken stuffed uh, ravioli. Okay. With fresh tomato sauce. Beautiful. And garlic, extra virgin olive oil, and basil. And then here we've got some salmon, it looks salmon, like? Salmon, yes, it's a salmon roll. Okay. So it's not a piece of salmon, but it's mm -hmm. uh, marinated and rolled. Ah, beautiful. And uh, served with uh, broccolini and uh, white wine sauce. So, very light. Everything is in a better box. We don't use very young, not a lot of sauce, not a lot of everything. Uh, they, a couple of, well, first off, how, what, what would you charge for a plate like this? Uh, $16. That's a deal. I mean, that's such a nice portion of everything. I love this idea. This is how I like to eat. I, I, I have a hard time settling on just one thing. So the idea that I can get four different offerings, I think, is brilliant. You're doing some good stuff here. I, I got to tell you, I mean, my, I'm salivating. <laughs> so that's always my, my cue to go out there and sit down and eat. It's the hardest part of your job. Right? The, the best, <laughs> the best, the, but don't, don't tell anyone else. <laughs> okay. Well, well. If it's not another familiar face. Nice to see you, Kirk. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing great, thanks. This is Sean Legor, and for those of you playing at home, let's see if I can get this family tree right. So Vince, who you met at the top of the show, has got a younger sister named Andriana. Andriana married Sean. I get it? You got it. Yeah, Perfect. Uh, married in, all, all, keeping it all in the family, so it's, uh, we have a blast. Now, are you, are you bouncing back, between, back and forth between Gaetano's in here as well? I do. So, you know, we all have our different roles and different way that we split it up, but uh, that's, you know, the blessing is that I get, we all get to jump around and kind of see the different guests and the different, you know, the service is similar, but uh, the different concepts and, and get to play around with that and sort of put our touch on the community. So you gained a wife, a family, and like three jobs. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least. That's <laughs> at least perfect. Three jobs. Now, if I remember correctly, back at Gaetano's, you had your hand quite a bit in the, the wine program there. I do. So I still do that over there and as well as here, um, you know, when we first set up, I did a lot of tasting with Fabio and um, talking about the, what the food's going to be and how that wine fits in and how the wine complements it uh, rather than... It sounds like an awful job. It was tough, a lot of long <laughs> nights of drinking. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. And now are we talking, uh, are we we doing mostly Italian wines, uh, California wines, combo of both? What so we... a little combo of both. I mean, we do about kind of a 70-30 rule. 70% Italian, 30 Californian um, or domestic. So we do, you know, that we wanted that approachable aspect. So whether you want to come in and, and get something that you're familiar with, like a Cabernet, or you want to come in and get something that you're not familiar with, maybe like a, a Sangiovese blend or, or something that you haven't seen before, we've kind of got it all um, covered for you. Well, I think well, a lot of times when people hear wine, it, it's it's sort of natural to think French, but there are some spectacular oh, yeah. Italian wines yeah. from all the different regions. And are we representing specific regions? Or are we sort um, of all over got, the board? I've got a little bit of everything. So uh, kind of three of the wines that I grabbed that I love the most, you know, I'll just point out real quick, is we have an El Fauno, which um, this is more the old world. You know, we have kind of old world, new world, and then one of my favorites. And this, okay. old, this is more the old world where it's um, it's kind of actually more of a Bordeaux blend. So you mentioned French wines. You know, they, they kind of started it. Do it always right. comes back to the French. Uh, it, it has to at some point. <laughs> but, you know, they're doing some great more old world style wines. And then this Pietro Santa um, is actually out of Central California. And they're doing, you know, an homage to, to um, Italian wines. It's Sangiovese blend. So you get that famous grape, but still kind of um, have that influence from Italy. And then the last one that's just my favorite is one that my wife and I have been to before, Felsina, and that's in Tuscany. So that famous, one of those famous regions up there. And, uh, you know, just great, small, um, family-owned and operated, small production. And that's a lot of the concept as well, is you know, the food's local, the wine's local, the beer's local, the, the well, cocktails. You know, we want to keep it all uh, small back. I'm glad you said that because I noticed that you've got several local beers. We do. We have two that are uh, brewed right here in Torrance, just down the street. I, you know what? I, I just love that concept for all sorts of reasons because, I mean, there's some really wonderful beer going on down here in Torrance right now. There is, there is, absolutely. But why go big when you can keep it local and get a really, really great product? Right. Awesome.
Good deal. Now, you know what? I just glanced over and I saw another familiar face. This is getting crazy. How's Hi, going, Andriana. Great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, once again, thank you for having me. And I, you look a little different this time. <laughs> Things have changed. We're adding, adding to the family. To the mix. Right now, I heard a rumor that, that you played a large part in this awesome decor. I did, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Absolutely. So um, we, we really wanted to make it look very rustic. Um, Gaetano's is very traditional and right. family pictures on the wall, but we wanted to have clean lines and, you know, reclaimed uh, dug fur. We've got zinc tables. And you've got, like, reclaimed wine barrels that made the, the lights. This look right behind you even. I mean, this was a uh, server station. There was a wall right here, so she had the idea, let's take it down and let's put a bar in and kind of add to the atmosphere of the whole restaurant. I, I, don't, I don't even know where you start on, on, on a concept like that because... Either. This is not my forte. It's like I'm back there with the food, you know. Yeah. But but to, to to have a vision like this, and you know what? What's slightly ironic is, Gaetano's it really resembles sort of like an Italian American restaurant, and this sort of resembles a restaurant you would find in Italy. Exactly. Yeah. Right? I mean, am I am I onto something here? Exactly. Very nice. Very nice. So you kept the love here in Torrance. You know, you had a, 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 an iconic restaurant, and now, now you've got your second one here, and I just I just hope it's here forever. Thanks, so, so do we. Yeah, so now it's time for me to eat, yes. I think. Can I, please? I've been yeah, waiting all morning. Enjoy the food. <laughs> all right, I'm off. All right. And good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, right I will. Oh, my goodness. So, this is the pea gnocchi. Mmm. That's a really a perfect dish. Oh man. The tomatoes, the spouts sort of bring some freshness to this, but yet it's so hearty, so decadent, so good. Mm. These are our prosciutto wrapped scallops. Mm. That prosciutto brings this perfect sort of saltiness to this sweet scallop, and this is perfection. Our tagliolini with the shrimp. We eat this all day. That is great. Here is our betto box. It's our butternut squash soup. Our ravioli. Mm. This man's pasta is really good. And our little wheel of salmon here. So nice. Look at these portions. Absolutely perfect. What a nice, nice lunch. And our salad with the persimmon. Perfectly cleansing. I'll take two. This is our panzanella salad with watermelon. Summertime, springtime, lunch, this is a great dish. Mm. I'm gonna give it to you straight. If you don't come to Betalino Kitchen and give it a try, you are making a major mistake. A really incredible food prepared by a Michelin star chef. Wonderful ambiance and really, really nice people. Now, I'm all done here, except for the food, of course. I'll be finishing that up. But my co-host, Hiba Samad, thinks she's got some beauty tips for us. Oh, Hiba? Thanks, Kirk. I hope your stomachs are full because we're about to take a walk through Paris. Right here in the heart of downtown is a store called Les Unique Boutique. It has everything from vintage to collectible. So let's not waste any more time. Follow me. I'm here with Nancy Freitas Gomez. Thank you for having us. Well, thank you for coming. Welcome to La Unique Boutique. It's a European dream in here. Tell me about the Parisian theme. How did it come about? I've always had a thing about design and everything French. So once we went to Paris and I came back, 
In 2013, I decided to open this boutique. It just makes me feel like I transport myself daily to Paris because I shop for each item and I handpick everything. And your store is a destination for local artists and artists from around the world. Yes, so this is one of our artists. Uh, her name is Liz and she actually uses antique furniture as her canvas. What's really nice about this is this is her canvas, but on top of that, it's a practical piece that you use in your home. So this is a beautiful dresser. She actually does all of this hand-painted design on here, and she creates a beautiful French look. And then we also have um, other designers, like I'm one of the designers, so I have these purses uh, that I actually um, make and they're all one-of-a-kind pieces and they're called key expressions and each one has a different theme so we have a Parisian theme and you know a cameo and a theatrical one and um, we also carry some purses called Mary Francis it's a it's a well-known designer a lot of celebrities carry these purses and they're really really nice each one is individually done and so they all are unique but I love a lot of the Brighton purses and the old vintage ones that carry a lot of the hardware um, that looks very Victorian. And so I handpick those and I look everywhere. They're not easy to find. To have something unique and different that speaks you is making a statement about yourself. You'll feel that here if you come to La Unique Boutique. You'll kind of feel the, the tranquility and the nice um, creative vibe. And it's an experience when you walk into the store. Yeah. I mean, if you look up, you'll see these beautiful chandeliers. Mm -hmm. Where are these chandeliers from? Do they go back to a certain era? Where do you find them? From like flea markets, um, I'll go to estate sales. You know, I try to just find them wherever I can. And if it's a new piece and I find it and it has that same flair and romantic feel, I'll buy that one too. I want to take a look at those amazing vintage dresses that you have back there. Yeah. The dresses are so feminine. I mean, it mm -hmm. takes you back to so many different eras. If you're looking for 50s or 20s or 40s, this is, um, you know, a 1900s here, kind of like one of the um, fancier dresses. And then we have um, other dresses that are really heavy, true 1900s, like vintage, real vintage. And when customers come in and they love a dress, where, can you tell them where is it from? Some of their costumes that we have um, are actually bought, so I'll buy them, you know, eBay, wherever. I'll look everywhere. Okay, yeah. and about the silk pieces back there, the yeah. kimonos, yes. which are already really in style from yes. different silk materials to cotton materials, but what are the unique ones back here? Well, so these particular silks, they're, uh, they're all 100% silk and they're beaded. They have beautiful beading on them and some of them have, you know, um, florals and some of them have artistic, you know, for like the 1920s, um, like the woman from the 1920s. Really, really nice. So if you're going to, um, you know, a party for 1920s, uh, you, all you need is a basic black and one of these kimonos. So I think it's time for some fun. I'm going to try on some of these pieces. Yay! Let's do it! And take a walk through history basically. Right? Yeah! That was so much fun trying on all those dresses. But an outfit is not complete without jewelry. Yes. But this is a very special type of jewelry, right? Yes. We have um, some vintage pieces. Um, so this is like from 1940s um, and it's all rhinestones. We have this bracelet that's actually made out of vintage earrings. Try it on. Yeah. And so they've taken different vintage earrings and then made it into a bracelet. And then we have things like this, which is accessories, and I love this too. Um, this is also made with vintage jewelry um, and vintage pieces, and it's just a, a little mirror, but it's just so cute. This is a new piece, so see it looks very vintage. And that's the big trend nowadays, vintage, antiques. Yes, exactly. so tell me about the popularity of kind of that trend and mm -hmm. what's unique about the vintage that's sold here. A lot of people that like the steampunk or just the old fashioned girl, we have a lot of uh, people that come here on Thursday nights 
for an open mic next door at the coffee shop and it's really cute because a lot of the people come dressed up. Several of those people will come in here, buy clothing so that they could go sing next door and kind of have that vintage look. And while you have beautiful bling like this, there's yes. also very casual items that people can buy. Yeah. So we should go check out the papaya section. Papaya. So these are chosen pieces that from the Papaya Company of artists that have done these paintings. Um, and uh, one of their most uh, popular is, uh, she's called Rose, and it says, love who you are, which is just beautiful. Tell me about why this location was your dream. Um, it just has the old town feel. So one of my favorite places is Disneyland and Main Street. Disneyland and just sort of reminds me of that when I come down here. It sort of seemed perfect to have the shop here. Thank you so much. And for everyone watching at home, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Taste of Torrance, where food and fashion meet. I'm Hiba Samad, and I'll catch you guys next time.